Hi. Um, today I'm going to talk about the uh, future life supported by a robotic avatar. Um, you know, actually, there I have a uh, two appointments. One is Osaka University, the other is uh, uh, ATR um, Research Institute, and the I have uh, you know, uh, my own laboratories uh, with my name there. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to show you the, a couple of robots um, from both the uh, organizations. And actually, you know, they are robots, right? They are not humans, right? And I'm building uh, that kind of a robot uh, these 20 years. And recently, you know, I have developed the uh, a little bit different, maybe it uh, looks creepy robot. And, uh, and I'm gonna uh, well, uh, convince you the why we're gonna have uh, this kind of uh, robots more uh, in, in our future, okay. So um, what I, I, I'm always thinking is what is humans? I think uh, this is the most important question for researchers. You know, and actually the, we are sharing the, these fundamental questions among the various research areas like uh, uh, cognitive science, and neuroscience, and robotics also, and philosoph uh, philosophies. Um, and you know, the why we are building a robot? Of course, you know, um, um, my purpose is not to develop an industrial robot, but uh, you know, I want to develop the uh, in interactive robot uh, that works in your daily life. So that is my purpose. So um, why I'm building uh, that kind of a robot? Because I want to know, the, uh, you know what is humans the, by building a robot. Actually, a robot is a mirror to reflect the humans. Um, I really think so. That, you know, um, the, because, you know, the we, um, well, the what is the idea of media? Um, idea, well, um, so our brain is designed for recognizing the human-like stuff, right? Therefore, you know, if we have uh, a sufficient technology, so, um, definitely we're going to have uh, more human-like stuff, human-like machine. Okay. So therefore, um, you know, the uh, technology development like uh, robotics uh, is um, is another way to understand humans. Um, so based on that kind, kind of ideas, I have developed uh, this robot. And I have developed the various robot, um, as I, I'm showing here. Now, I, that is from a very simple robot to the uh, very complicated, very human-like uh, robot. Um, the ones we uh, you know, they think about uh, this kind of a robot, we're going to have uh, various questions. You know. so I'm going to talk about the, uh, a couple of in important questions the, uh, in my studies. The first question is, uh, how much human likeness does a robot need to have? Right? Um, you know, as I said, well, the, we have a brain to recognize the human-like stuff. But uh, you know, we didn't carefully consider about the appearance of the robot. So, so uh, this question is, is quite important for developing a robot, right? and at the same time to understand the imp imp and understand the human itself, right? So we want to know the uh, um, the meaning of a human-like appearance. And therefore, um, well, in order to study about these questions, I have developed uh, this very human-like robot in 2004, and I have exhibited uh, this android the in in um, the World Expo uh, in Nagoya, the Aichi, right? As you can see here, the robot has some, a very complicated mechanism, and, and, and in addition to that, the robot can, you know, that we could develop a very human-like facial expressions and appearance also, and the reactions, uh, you know, you can see here. But however, you know, this robot cannot talk like a human, right? Uh, people, well, the robot has a very human-like appearance and movement, and but uh, you know the conversational ability was quite limited. Uh, but you know, um, and the people uh, they wanted to have a much longer conversation with that robot, but it's impossible. So question is, how can we develop the android that talk like a human, right? So, um, but in order to answer to these questions. You know, the, I have decided to develop the uh, uh, functions for, for the intera um, teleoperations. Actually, you know, it's impossible to have a perfect artificial intelligence like a human. Therefore, you know, the, I have developed uh, this teleoperated function. And here, the operator is the watching two monitors and operating the robot, right? Um, and the camera is, you know, the, there are two cameras are uh, uh, monitoring the uh, bi uh, visitors and, and, and the uh, you know, Android itself, right? Operator is just watching two monitors and talking. And the computer is sending the, uh, um, the operator's voice 
to the Android, but same time the uh, you know, computer is analyzing the shape of lips and and the simulate uh, well, and they are moving the Android lips uh, uh, like uh, uh, op well, um, well like operators the lip movement. And at the same time, you know, the the, uh, the computer is tracking the operator's face, and the an, and Android, in, you know, in, well, imitating the operator's head movements. So, uh, you know, the, uh, well, the operator um, can make sure that the Android is synchronizing with his, uh, the, you know, the lip movement and head movement, right? And it likes uh, uh, the own, uh, well, it looks like our own uh, the body movement. Right, and usually we have uh, two views, right? So I, I'm, I, uh, well, uh, here I'm talking to you, but I, I'm watching you, and I'm also the watching my bodies, right? The same thing happens in this system. Okay, so in this system, you know, the bo and both the visitor and operator can adapt to this Android. So the meaning of adaptation is, uh, you know, the, the well, the both of them, they, they can naturally recognize that Android uh, as myself or as. You know that uh, actually that is my copy. Therefore, you know the and uh, the visitors, you know, recognize, accept that Android as myself. And uh, sometimes I, I can accept that Android body as my own body. Okay. So um, well, the important things is uh, you know an adaptation by operators, right? You know the ones we start to talk that with that Android, we can accept that Android body as the uh, our the you know own bodies you know operator recognize accept uh, well they they can accept that android body as own body right so the, this is one example that when the someone push the cheek like this you know this is you know well um, this is very annoying right you know well and, and but but uh, you know and the, the the funny thing is uh, uh, the, um, so by watching this you know. The, uh, the, uh, the by, by monitoring the, these things, uh, well, um, these things, the, um, the operator can have a virtual, very strong virtual feeling to be touched, right? So there, there is no sensory feedback, but uh, the operator is just watching. But still, you know, the operator can have a virtual feeling to be touched, right? So that means that, you know the, uh, the operator is accepting uh, that Android body as the, his own body. You know, there are many. Um, uh, similar the cognitive the uh, studies on the, uh, on this kind of uh, you know the adaptation to the uh, android bodies so why we we, we have uh, this kind of uh, you know um, the phenomena because uh, uh, basically we we don't know our body uh, we don't know ourselves right so we don't know the, our face and we don't know the our uh, voice and uh, you know maybe the behaviors so every every morning you are watching the uh, you know the mirrors and uh, you, you, you know they probably you believe uh, you know the, your face but uh, actually you don't know your face because the mirror you know the, the mirror every every morning you you watch the mirrors right but uh, the mirror is uh, you know the uh, the the completely different from the photograph right it, it, you know um it, it's a mirror image, right? So, and the human face is is not symmetrical. Therefore, you know, the, if you compare the mirror image and the photograph, it looks like a, a completely different the person. So, mirror, mirror image is a badger, right? Therefore, you know, that you don't know your face, and the same thing happens for the voice, right? So, you you, you believe but you you, um, you know that you are voice, but uh, you know, if once you record your voice, you know, it that sounds like a completely different person's voice, right? The same thing happens for the behaviors. Right, you don't you don't know the uh, you know how, well, what kind of a behavior are you taking right now? Right, you cannot tell that. Right, so therefore you know th that means that you know we don't have a perfect knowledge about ourselves. Right, therefore it's easy. You know, once we see the some synchronized the, the robot, the, uh, the synchronized the movement on the robot, we can naturally uh, we, we can easily accept that kind of robot as our own body. So. Um, therefore, you know that this kind of a robot will be uh, a new media that transfers our presence to the distant place. And if we want, we can have uh, this kind of, uh, you know, the uh, uh, meeting wi 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 with the with the Android, right? So we don't have any problem with this one, right? <laughs> you know, actually, this is this is quite a realistic meeting, and uh, the student can feel the my authority also, right? And uh, you know, the, uh, we can have uh, this kind of uh, uh, conference, and the um, you know, um, 
I had uh, this conference in, in Australia. I was in Japan, uh, this was in Australia. And uh, you know, uh, this is a very beautiful scene, in the, you know, the conversation with the blind persons. Yeah. Does someone say you know, this teleoperated Android is a kind of uh, a TV conference, but uh, actually that is completely different. Right? We cannot share the uh, tactile sensations with the uh, you know, TV conference, but here we can do that. And if we want to, you know, we well, you know, well, what we did is uh, um, we put uh, this Android in uh, well, the uh, normal situation. Uh, we put this Android in a cafe, right? And uh, the, um, well, we have the observed the uh, reaction of people, but uh, you know, half of the, the 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 people could not become aware, you know, couldn't become aware of this, right? You know, they just thought that, you know, some you know, human is there, right? But another half of people, they find, uh, something, uh, find something wrong and, and they come to talk, right? But once we start to talk, you know, that we could have, a, uh, we could be, uh, we, they became uh, the friend of each other. Right? We didn't have any problem, right? So actually, you know, that we have, uh, the three people has the uh, own Androids right now, right? And, well, you know, they're probably, you know, in the near future, you're going to have uh, your own Android soon, <laughs> I think. Uh, um, and and then you know the I uh, to I'm I'm you know in improving that Android technology and more and more and it, you know um, so this is a very beautiful you know, scene and you know, this is Android theater you can see here the very beautiful Android. However, and we have the, you know um, we had the Android theater in in the cathedral and the people moved very much and someone you know, cried and but uh, you know problem was you know that someone said that this Android is so beautiful. Uh, and that was not so human-like, okay? Um, let me skip this one. And so here, uh, you know, and what, um, uh, well, actually, the perfect Android, you know, the, it's very, uh, once we got a very beautiful Android, you know, the be beautiful appearance and the beautiful, the, uh, uh, the talk, right? Th that Android is not so human-like. So the question is, uh, what is more human-like, right? I think, uh, you know, the, um, the humans interact with others by using the imaginations, right? So just one photograph cannot represent the persons, right? So in order to identify the persons, so the we, um, we're going to check the uh, various modalities, appearance and movement and the snare and the, and the voice, right? And well, you know, the, that, well, roughly speaking, so I would say, you know, that we, we recognize the person based on the, based on the imaginations. Right. Therefore, you know, and I thought, you know, probably the minimal design, right, um, the the maximum the imagination. Okay. So, so this is the uh, you know um, the uh, minimal design. Actually, you know, we cannot tell the age and the gender. But uh, you know, this looks like a human. But we cannot tell, we cannot tell the age and gender, right? So once we hear the voice from that android, that robot, you know, usually we have uh, we. Uh, uh, we have an imagination about the speakers. You know, when you you are talking with uh, the, with someone the, via telephones, you you can have an imagination about that person, right? And then we can mentally project that imagination on, onto this neutral appearance. So we we call this ro uh, robot a pteranoid, and uh, you know this is pretty good for the elderly. The elderly likes uh, this robot very much. You know, and she, and she is, you know, she she loves to talk with this one, but she doesn't like to talk to uh, humans or androids. You know, and there is no, you know, exceptions. And we did uh, this kind of a field test in Japan and Australia and, and Denmark, and then you know, Denmark government decided to use uh, this, you know, teleoperated and teleoperated robot for the elderly care. You know, the, in the local areas, the elderly are living alone, but you know, telephone is is not so good because uh, just after the telephone call, they feel some loneliness. But uh, you know, the, um, with this one, you know, they, the elderly can feel the uh, presence of the person. Right, presence of the speakers. Therefore, you know, they don't get fear, they don't feel the loneliness. So, um, so with this media, well, um, I and, and, and we could make sure the effect of that kind of, uh, you know, the and the, uh, the appearance, right, and the minimal design of humans. Then I have decided to build the, uh, you know, a mobile phone with this design. So. And actually, this is a model of a mobile phone. You know, the near future we're gonna have uh, this kind of a mobile phone more, right? Why? Because you know, the what is this? So that is the, the you know the uh, smartphones. 
But now, you know, smartphone has uh, voice recognition functions, and everybody talking to that black box. It's quite strange, right? Right? Everybody talking to the, this black box, right? But this is more natural, right? You know, we have a brain to talk to the humans. Therefore, you know, the uh, near future, the smartphone gonna have uh, this kind of, uh, you know, the human-like appearance. So, um, anyway, so uh, we're gonna have uh, more human-like media in the near futures, and uh, you know, we can have more uh, the human-friendly machines. Thank you very much.